What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World and aboard the FA-18C Hornet by Eagle Dynamics for another tutorial. In this one, as you can see, we are in a cold and dark airplane and we need to get her started up. A lot of multiplayer servers you might play on or indeed some missions will require you to cold start the Hornet. So we're going to learn how to do that today. Now there is an official cold start procedure a full startup checklist available in Chuck's guide, uh, as well as the uh, FA-18 Hornet manual that's published by Eagle Dynamics. Uh, however, it does contain a lot of extraneous steps and um, system tests and bit checks and things like that, that in reality, at least as far as the sim is concerned, aren't really all that necessary. They're just there for completeness and realism from a simulator standpoint, uh, for the majority of us, we're never, well, I'm going to assume the majority of us are never going to fly the real Hornet. Um, so uh, having a fairly abbreviated startup procedure is very helpful. So I'm going to show you my abbreviated startup procedure. Um, bear in mind, again, full disclaimer, this is not the official startup procedure. This is just my somewhat quick and dirty startup procedure that's designed to get you started up with essential systems and ready to taxi in a reasonable amount of time so you can get up in the air and start dropping bombs and shooting missiles and all that good stuff. So with all that said, what I like to do first is make sure my armaments are all set up. So for my armament screen, I might pick my armaments, set up my chaff and flares, fuel, etc., and a skin if I want it. And I'll let the ground crew do all of that stuff. While that's going on, our first step, we're going to look down and we're going to arm our ejection seat with this switch here. It says armed now. We are next going to right click on the battery switch and flick it forward. And we can hear some systems starting to word of life. We've got some lights on. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is go over to our APU switch, which is over here next to the throttle on the left side. Click that forward. And our APU is going to roar to life. Rearming complete. And our arming is complete, which is good. And we now have a green light on the APU, which means our APU is fully spooled up and ready to go. So we're actually ready to start the right engine. Right below the APU switch right here is the engine crank switch. It has a left and a right position. We're going to right click it to go to the right position. And that's going to start spooling up the right engine. And if we look at our engine instrumentation down here, we can see the RPMs of our right engine starting to climb. And once they're above 20%, we can bring our right throttle out of idle using right shift and home keys on the keyboard. So we can see our right hand throttle is now out of the off position and into the idle position. And that's our right engine started. Now with our right engine started, we now have generator power to just about all of our systems and we can start turning them all on. Uh, I'm just gonna turn that radio frequency cause just to turn off the beeping. Um, you might've heard it, um, you might've heard the system say flight controls, flight controls, as well as roll left, roll left. That is the uh, cockpit voice, also known as Bitchin' Betty, uh, just running a self-test and also saying that the flight control system is out of whack, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. So don't worry about that right this second. For now, let's look forward and we can start flipping on our cockpit instruments with the right engine running. So our DDIs have power switches above them on each side. So we're going to right click them twice to the day position. Those are going to spring to life. Right below our UFC, we have a series of knobs here that control our HUD. And this knob here, the HUD brightness and power switch, we want to rotate that all the way to the right. And that's going to power on our head-up display. 
Right below that, our AMPCD. We want to rotate this knob from off to bright. You can use a mouse wheel or you can click and drag, whichever. And then that's going to spring to life. And while I'm looking at it down here, right below the AMPCD are the power switches for our EW system, the Electronic Warfare. I'll do a full video on this system later on, but for now just know that the main power switch for the EW, the RWR, and all of that is right here. And you heard it go beep, beep, beep. That means it's powered up. We also then want to change this ECM switch from off to receive, REC. And then we want to flick our dispenser switch here for the chaff and flare dispensers from the bottom position to either on or bypass. And I'll do a full video on what those different switch positions actually mean later on. Next thing we want to do is look down and to our right. We have our sensor panel here. Our radar switch is currently in the off position. We want to flick it to the right, two notches to the OPR for operating. That's going to turn our radar on. And then we also have an INS switch here, currently set to off. Since we're on an airfield, also known as on the ground, we're going to switch it to GND for ground, and that's going to begin the ground-based alignment. And we can see that the ground-based alignment is starting. I'm just going to turn the moving map off here. With this indication here, that's going to count down from 99.9 .9 until about 0 0.5, and it's going to say OK. And it's going to take about a minute or so. And while that's happening, we can get some different instrumentation going here. So on our right hand DDI, we want to hit our menu button. We want to hit our menu button again to get to the support page. And then we want to click on FCS. And this is going to tell us the status of our flight control system. Full video coming detailing the flight control system and general flying dynamics. But for now, just know that if there are X's in the boxes, that's generally not a good thing. However, since this plane was off and cold and dark, uh, the FCS system needs to be reset upon startup to get rid of these boxes. So the way we do that is we look over on the left side. Behind the throttle here is the FCS control panel. And we've got a big silver button here labeled reset. We're going to press and hold that for about a second. And then while we're over here, we're also going to press and hold the takeoff trim button, which is in the center of the rudder trim knob. Press and hold that for about a second. And if we look forward at our FCS screen once again, all the X's in the boxes have disappeared. And if you look at the stabilizer setting, it is now 12 degrees nose up, which is standard field takeoff trim. Okay. Next, we want to engage our OBOG system, the OBOGS or onboard oxygen generator system with this switch way back here on the left side. Flick that forward. Don't worry about that switch. But uh, the OBOG system is important. That provides oxygen to our pilot. So we want to have that on. Now, optionally at this point, I'll also flick on my cockpit lights. So we have the interior lighting panel here with our consoles and instrument panel lights. I will flick these to forward. And that's going to light up our instruments. Very nice. We're going to want to go over here to our landing gear and flaps panel. We want to make sure our anti-skid switch is on when we're on the field. And we also see our flaps are at full. We want to right click this twice so that our flaps are at auto. And that's going to retract the flaps to the full up position. We can also go over here underneath the right side DDI to our standby attitude indicator and just give that a little nose uh, or a little mouse wheel down to uncage it, get rid of the red flag. Looking just below that next to the hook lever and the wing lever, we're going to uncage and set our radar altimeter 
I set it to about 100 feet, but you can set that however you want. And we've done all this with just one engine running, so let's get the other engine running. We're going to go back over to our engine crank switch here. We're going to left click that to flick it to the left side. Again, watch our engine instruments when that reaches about 20% RPM. Right alt and home to bring the left side throttle out of idle. And you can hear the engine starting to spool up. Now while that engine's spooling up, let's go ahead and get our canopy closed with left control and C. I like to close my canopy around this time. Okay. Check our engine is running, temperatures look good, plenty of fuel in the tank. Our APU is actually going to flick itself off automatically in a second, so we don't actually have to worry about that at all. Everything else looks good. We want to look forward now at our UFC. There's two buttons we need to hit here. IFF, which is this button here. Press that and then press and hold the on off button for about a second until we see on on the main digital display there. And then we also want to hit the DL button. It stands for data link and I will do a full video on the data link system in this airplane, but just know for now that we do want to turn it on. So we press data link and just with the IFF button, press and hold on off to turn it on here. Now our data link and IFF systems are on. Last thing we need to do is just verify that our INS system is aligned. So we're looking back down at our AMPCD. We see ground quality 0 0.5 and OK. So we can look over at our INS switch. Left click it one more time to nav right here. And we are pretty much ready to taxi. So there you have it, folks. That is a fairly quick and streamlined startup procedure. There are, as I mentioned, a number of system tests and checks that you can run if you want the full experience. And again, I will link to Chuck's guide in the video description that does detail the full fat startup procedure. Uh, I think it's about 60 some odd different steps. But for our purposes, and just to get up in the air quickly, this works just as well. So I hope you enjoyed that, and stay tuned for the next video. Take care.